What we have is an Asmex web service. It's up and running and has been maybe for a couple of years serving your customers as it should. And what we want to do is implement a WCF service. It does the same thing, but we'd like to move the WCF because it provides us with more functionality. Maybe you want to utilize the REST API. Maybe you want to utilize MSMQ or a TCP binding. Uh, there's a lot of different reasons you want to go to WCF, but it's perhaps uh, down to a basic level. You just want to get there. What we're going to do is we're going to have Azimex and WCF up and running at the same time, talking to the same back end. This could be your business logic back end. This could be another system, etc. But what we'll have is an Azimex web service and a WCF service running at the same time. And the reason for this is you want to provide some type of migration path for your customers. So your Azimex service may be up serving customers and you may be sending them emails letting them know that maybe six months later you're going to get rid of the Azimex web service and you need to migrate to the WCF service. You provide them with some information on how to connect to the WF, WCF service, the proxies, the con config files, etc. some tutorials for them to migrate over to. Uh, and then what happens is six months later, the Azimex service goes away. So let's go ahead and get into some code so I can show you how to do that. And what we have is we have a customer service Azimex here. I've already created the customer service Azimex web service, and what it does is it gets a customer based upon a customer's ID. It's going to return a customer object, which we can take a look at. It's a simple customer DTO with a first name, last name, and an ID. Nothing to do too fancy. And then what we also have is a My Customer Service. Now this could be a implementation of a service pattern, etc. But we'll just take a look at it. Here it would normally connect and do some logic, connect to a customer repository, database, you know, lay other layers of your system, other tiers, etc. Right now we're just going to return a simple customer just for an example, just to see that you actually get that data back as we expect it to. So if we come back here, we can see we get the service, and the service gets a customer from an ID. Let's hop into the service there. You can see there it is. It returns a customer. And now the user is returned. So if we were actually to fire up this web service, we view it in the browser. You get a customer based upon an ID, maybe it's 33, and returns a customer. Simple as can be. So that's up and running the WCF services. Let's go ahead and close that down. So now what we want to do is we want to create WCF services up and running at the same time. Now please note, in order to do this, you need to have proper separations concerns. All of your business logic cannot be within the code behind of your Azimex file. And if it is, you're going to have some work that you need to do before you can create your WCF service uh, and make sure that it's talking to the same back end. You'll need to actually extract that data out into perhaps different class libraries, such as I've done here, into a basic customer domain where my service and maybe my domain objects live. Again, this is a simple example. This is not the preferred method to do it, but just one way of how you could do it. So now what you would normally need to do is add a WCF project to your solution. And you just say file new project web WCF service application, give it a name. I've already done that here. And what I have here is customer service.svc. Now, if you are not familiar with how to create a WCF service, please watch the other Dimecast on how to create a WCF service uh, so you're more familiar with it. Inside of the customer service SVC CS class, we don't have any code written yet because you know we're not really sure how we're going to actually implement this. But we do have this the contract here, and what we do know is we want it to do basically the same me, the same exact thing that the Azimex web service does. It gets a customer based upon an ID. But what we need to do now is just decorate it with the operation contract. We have the service contract for the service. Let's go back to the implementer, which is you see here I customer. WCF service, which is where we just came from, and we need to implement those members. I've already done that when I've not coded up. And basically, this does the same thing. It's going to connect to the My Customer Service, which you've seen before, which comes here and gets the customer, returns the customer. Perfect. We, haven't, we don't have to change any code inside the customer service, and it sends it back. The only thing is, is since we're sending a customer back over the wire, the customer needs to have the data contract and the data member attributes applied to its uh, class and it's to its members. Let's comment that out. And then comment this. You can see here all I've done is apply the data contract, 
attribute from the system that service model namespace and the data member attribute to the first name, last name, and ID. This is not going to have any effect on the customer Azimex web service. So if we were to build this now, we'd see that the build succeeded. So we have our customer web service. The web config file was built for us already and when we created it from the project template, so I'm not really going to have to edit anything inside of there. And what we can do now is we can go back to our customer web service here. And let's close that one out. Make sure it all built right. Succeeded. Let's look at our customer web service here. You can see there's get customer. This is our Azimex web service. It's passing a value 55. You see we hit a breakpoint that I set, it comes into the customer, there's our customer ID 55, it's going to return the new customer, there it is. Let's go back to our WCF web service and look at something inside of there. Start a new debug session. Now inside of here, WCF does not give us a test client. What we need to do is copy this WSDL address. We need to fire up the WCF test client. This is located inside of Program Files, Common, uh, Visual Studio 9, Common 7 IDE. It's called WCF Test Client.exe. Once you fire it up, right click, add service, paste your WSDL inside of there. Basically creates a client proxy inside of this little application. So we can connect to it. Let's double click on our method here that we want to use. Now we can click 66. Hit invoke, it's going to warn us that we're going across the wire. That's fine. Wait a second to invoke the service. We'll see here we have a breakpoint that was set. Pop back up. And there's our ID 66. This is the same my customer service. There we go. There's everything we turned. And what we're using is we're using the same customer service for the Azimex web service and the WCF service. So as you can see, we have both of these up and running and have them serving from the same backend. Now in that six month period, you could actually have your customers weaned off of the Azimex web service to start to use the WCF service. Again, I hope this has helped. Again, this is Don Felker with Magenic. Thank you.